Howdy, thanks for joining us for devotions again. We're going to read here from Luke chapter 22, beginning at verse 24. A dispute also arose among them as to which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. Interesting that this discussion comes while they're at the Last Supper, just after Jesus has instituted communion. And now the discussion begins, which of us among the disciples is the greatest? And Jesus said to them, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. And those in authority over them are called benefactors, but not so with you. Rather, let the greatest among you become as the youngest, and the leader as the one who serves. For who's the greater, one who reclines at table, or the one who serves? Isn't it the one who reclines at table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stayed with me in my trials, and I assign to you, as my Father assigned to me, a kingdom that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. It's funny how this happens at the Lord's Supper. Such, at the, at the Last Supper, such huge things are happening. Jesus has instituted communion. He said, take and eat. This is my body. Take and drink. This is my blood. As he passes it around to his disciples, he's, he's about to be betrayed into the hands of the um, well, people who hate him. He's about to be crucified. And the disciples are here saying, all right, which among us is the greatest? And a dispute arose among them. So they're arguing around the dinner table, uh, who's greater? Is it me or you? Should I have authority over you, you over me, this kind of thing? And they're trying to figure out who's the guy that can boss everybody else around. And Jesus says, wait a minute. That's what the Gentiles do. In Hebrew, <clears throat> in Hebrew the word for Gentiles is goyim. It means kind of the nations, technically. And uh, one of the things that doesn't necessarily come across in the English for us, is that the goyim is, is very derogatory. It means not just the nations, it means the outsiders, the people not chosen by God, the ones who don't live the way that they ought to. Um, so there's Israel, and then there's the goyim, and they're those people that that uh, aren't God's chosen people. They're on the out and out. It's, that We don't want to be like them. And yet, at multiple times in Israel's history, uh, they do want to be like the Goyim. One of the first examples that happened we had in, in uh, 1 Samuel recently where uh, Israel asks for a king and, uh, and they've been following Moses who gives them God's word and they say, well, we don't want Moses. We want to be like the Goyim, which is such a crazy thing to say because why would they want to be like the outsiders, the ones who aren't chosen by God? But so here Jesus uses that same example. He says, you know, the Goyim, the kings of the Gentiles, they exercise lordship over the people that are under them. If you have a Gentile king, he's going to keep everybody under his thumb and make sure that they stay down underneath his authority because that's what authority is for, is for the power and for the, the benefit of the one who's in authority. I think this is part of the part of the issue we're experiencing in our nation right now with all the riots and things. Now, the you know, there's the protests and then there's the riots and they're kind of separate things. And we know that there's racism and brokenness in our country. We know that there's um, marginalization on all kinds of different fronts. But one of the things that's important for us to keep in mind is that even when, even when we try to do good, we're still a broken people. And so we are going to have these problems. We need always to seek after justice and uh, and not let that well, never waver in in trying to be more just <clears throat> and trying to uh, to care more for the people who uh, are marginalized, for those that um, don't have the advantages that we have. But especially with the riots, people are, um, you know, with the ones breaking into storefronts and, and looting and different things like that. Uh, somebody brought up an interesting point on an interview. Uh, she said, this is how I feel every day. And that's an interesting point to make. Uh, when, when she said, this is the kind of danger that I feel every day. And I can't speak to her experience. I don't know. But I know that uh, there's people being taken advantage of in as a store is being looted. Obviously, the store owner is being taken advantage of. But that also happens in our in our society all the time. People get taken advantage of. Maybe it's not in a in a violent looting kind of a way. But people do get taken advantage of when sometimes prices are jacked up higher than they ought to be. Um, or in a business deal, somebody tries to take advantage of somebody. Heck, any time that we sell a car or a house, our intent is to try and get as much money from it as possible so that we can, um, you know, so we can make more money. And if somebody else is willing to pay, then it's just kind of considered okay. 
I shouldn't say it's all the time the way that it happens, but it happens that way often. And there's all sorts of different ways that we take advantage of other people and we say, I'm in this position of power, and so I'm going to use that power to further my own benefit and by taking advantage of other people. It doesn't happen consciously necessarily. It often, often happens as an accident or just in one of these sort of roundabout ways that isn't obvious that we're taking advantage of somebody and marginalizing somebody else and keeping them in this corner. But Jesus says that's the way the Gentiles do it. That's the way the Goyim do it. That's the way the people do it who aren't chosen by God. That's the way the people do it who don't have the promise of eternity, eternal life with God waiting for them. And so we're free from that. This is what Jesus is pointing out. He says, I'm, I'm among you as the one who serves. Jesus knows he's going to the cross here for your salvation and for mine. He's going to the cross and then obviously through to the resurrection and the ascension to the right hand of the Father so that you and I can spend eternity in paradise living with him. So we don't have to take advantage of other people here to try and live our best life that we can now. The idea is to care for people. Jesus points out here that, that uh, all authority is there so that we can care for for somebody else. It's to care for the people that are under us. That's the whole point of authority in God's kingdom. It's not, it's not so that you can keep somebody under your thumb that you have authority. It's that anybody who's under the authority is there for the authority to care for and to serve and to protect and to show God's love to. And so we think about this as we go through our daily lives, whether it's as a, as a parent, as an employee, as an employer, uh, whatever position you find yourself in, whatever authority God has given you in your life, even if it's only over a pet or a bedroom or little siblings or whatever it might be, God has given you that authority to care for the people that are under there, to love and to serve them as Jesus loved and served you and me, even with his own life and with sacrificing himself for our sake. Well, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we experience uh, this unrest in our nation, we ask that you would um, guide and keep us through all of it. Lord, help us to uh, listen to each other, to learn and grow together, um, to love each other as you have loved us. Help us not to marginalize people or to take advantage of them, to further our own interests at their expense, uh, but help us to love them as you've loved us by sacrificing ourselves for their sake. Uh, help us to love them with no expecting anything not without expecting anything in return. Lord, uh, bless us as we continue through these difficult times and uh, hold us always in the hope of the resurrection. We ask it all in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us today. You all have a good one.